Newguys.com presents Paradise, Louisiana. Paradise, Louisiana is brought to you by Circle K, Baton Rouge Coca-Cola Bottling Company, Benny's Car Wash and Oil Change, Demco, CCA Louisiana, and the CCA Louisiana Star Tournament. Relief Windows, visit Baton Rouge, an authentic Louisiana experience. And by Farm Bureau Insurance. Welcome to Paradise, Louisiana. This week's edition, we're coming to you. We're finally getting back. We're at BBQ Guys, right here at the showroom and the warehouse. And uh, let me tell you what's important about BB, the BBQ Guys right now. If you go on the internet, but if you're in the Baton Rouge area, you talk about shopping, now's the time. Father's Day is right around the corner. Uh, they inundated. They got people walking through right now. It's unbelievable. But if you never visit this showroom, and see some of the things. We also got a fishing segment coming from them. I made a trip to the Louisiana Wildlife and Fisheries meeting. Uh, there was some controversy on there having to do with the pokey boats or the Menhaden boats. Uh, there was some arguments on both sides. I got a little B-roll. Uh, and uh, I did interview one of the big pushers behind it. I don't know if they're against it, but they need to, we need to do a study. We need to go out there and really get the truth and get some information on what's happening over there, especially the ground down in the Fouchon area right now. We're getting a lot of complaints from fishermen. So uh, we, we're gonna have a bit, we're gonna have a little interview with David Cresson for CCA. Also, we got some other things that CCA is involved in. We won't talk about them, it's unbelievable. But their website and what's going on and what you can do and, and uh, games you can play, it, it's just unbelievable. It's too much for me to talk about right now. I got a tournament and rodeo report, and uh, I got some calls that came in and the pictures. I, I did a little survey on, on the damage to some of the landings out in South Louisiana, especially out where I live, Island Marina. I had some water under my camp, but it looked like, thank God, we, we dodged another bullet uh, all over. Uh, the flooding here in Baton Rouge didn't materialize, all the rain, so uh, let's again, let's keep in our prayers. God bless Louisiana. Keep on blessing. Stay tuned. More Paradise, Louisiana. Why choose barbecue, guys? Because this is barbecue, guys. Not only do we have the largest online selection of grills and outdoor furniture, top-notch customer service, affordable financing, and 3D design services to help you tie it all together, but we also know what it is you love most about outdoor living. Time spent with family and friends. Combined with our expert advice, you'll have everything you need to design your dream outdoor life. Stop by our showroom today. I'm Brett Favre. As a quarterback in the NFL, if I didn't stay focused, I ended up on my back or worse. Even the smallest distraction could make a good play or offensive drive come to an end. When you're in a car, the smallest distraction could end much more than a drive. It could end someone's life. Just like I refuse to lose on the field, I refuse to lose someone I love to distract a driver. And you should too. Focus on the road. Don't drive distracted. A message from Farm Bureau Insurance. It's that time of year. CCA Star Tournament time. We might have a star winner, folks. Don't miss your chance for more categories, more prizes, and more smiles. Young and old, there's a division for everyone. You can win a truck, RV, boat, and much more. Sign up today for a chance to become an early bird winner. The fun starts Memorial Day weekend. Visit CCA Star to get your ticket today. Hey everyone, welcome back. I was lucky enough to get my hands on some wild caught salmon, and man, it's nice. So today, I want to do something with a little Mexican flair. So let's grill up some blackened, wild-caught, chili lime salmon on my Blaze Pro grill. Let's go. I'll go ahead and turn the grill on to high heat and set the cast iron in so that it can preheat as well. I'm adding just a little smoke for another layer of flavor. You can choose to do this or not. It's not detrimental to the recipe. Mm -hmm. 
So while the grill is preheating, I'm going to pat the fish dry and gently feel for any bones that may still be in there, and if so, get those out. And now I can get the chili lime rubbed together. In a small bowl, mix together one and a half teaspoons of coconut oil, one teaspoon of chili powder, half a teaspoon of garlic powder, a quarter teaspoon of smoked paprika, a quarter teaspoon of sea salt, and the zest and juice of a lime. It'll turn into a paste that I'll just coat the meat side with. So by this time, the grill should be well preheated. Man, I love the aroma you get from quick searing some lemon and limes. Again, this is just for my garnishment, so you can choose to do this step or not. Now time to put the salmon on. I'll cook this meat side down first for about three and a half minutes for a filet this size. Then another three and a half minutes on the skin side to fully cook the fish. Man, salmon is super awesome and healthy. It is rich in omega-3 acids, probably one of the most nutritious foods on the planet. Good for decreasing inflammation, lowering blood pressure, and also a great source of protein. And it's just super versatile while cooking. Man, it's looking and smelling great. Can't wait to try it. I think she smells salmon. I like this served on a bed of cilantro rice. Once plated, I'll squeeze a bit more lemon or lime and it's ready to devour. Looks good. Oh, uh, look. This is a super simple recipe. Uh, all of these ingredients, which are just a few, I have in my home year round. Uh, you can use pretty much any frozen fish you may have or even chicken. So yeah, let's give it a shot. Good job. Oh yeah. That lime. I threw a little cilantro in the in the bed of rice. That is delicious. Oh yeah. Good stuff. Mm, really good. Thanks for watching today. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that bell for notifications. See you next time. The best part about being a member of a Touchstone Energy Cooperative is that it's your Touchstone Energy Cooperative. That's the power of your co-op membership. Demco, your Touchstone Energy Cooperative. For the thirsty, for those who hang out in packs, for heroes, for sidekicks, for those who see the glass half empty, for those who see it half full, for those on the right, for those on the left, for those with nicknames, for those with curves, for people that cycle, for people that recycle, for BFFs, for frenemies, for those with style, for lovers, for families, for big families, for everyone. Welcome back to Crowd Ice, Louisiana and BBQ. Guys, what can I tell you? Look at this showroom, it's unbelievable. We showed you pictures, go on their website, it's just unbelievable. You know, uh, every time I come here, I get amazed. I talk to him, ask him with all this going on, you know, how it's business. He said it, it's, it's just it's unbelievable. People calling, they do an unbelievable amount of business. They said, thank God, and uh, I want to thank them again. But right now, they're keeping us going, they're keeping us on the air. Thank you, BBQ guy. Thank you, Mike. Both the mics over there to handle my account. So another, another thing, I, I went to the Louisiana Wildlife and Fisheries. Uh, I knew they, were, they asked people, CCA and a bunch of organizations, asked us to show up 
and they were going to discuss and talk before the commission uh, about the rules and regulations that's pertaining to the Menhaden catch. Uh, I think it's 85, 90 percent of the Menhaden catch is coming from the Louisiana coast. Uh, they gave reports that I don't agree with. I took pictures. I was trying to watch and listen, but uh, some of it is just ridiculous. Let me tell you who I seen some. I'm just going to name a few. There's a bunch of people there. People went to the podium and talked. A lot of them did uh, both ways. But, but the biggest ones over there, there were complaints or concern. Let's put it that way. They want a better, better study being know how much the bycatch, what's affecting them, uh, is it taken away from recreational fishermen. Uh, Menhaden are also one of the big food sources for speckled trout, redfish, and all the game fish. So if you go offshore, if you're fishing what? What you use them for bait most of the time? Well, snapper or whatever, you use them in Hayden. So uh, some of the guys that got up there and talked was the Charter Boat Association, D. Cohagen. D. Cohagen, a longtime friend, longtime captain. He's partnered with Dudley Vanderboer and them. D. D. was really upset. He didn't like some of the reports and statistics he got. He got up and talked in them, but the biggest one I was going to tell you is CCA, there are people from CCA, recreational fishing, and there was a lot of people got up and talked. A lot of the captains, the lodge owners, they all got up and talked. It was too much for me to show you everything, so I got some B-roll of looking at the crowd. The, the commissioners asked a lot of questions. You can say they were leaning and they were concerned, but the main one, I did get a chance to get a little interview with David Cressall. And David Cresson, I think, hit the nail on the head. You know, not so much a complaint, a concern, but it's time to, to recheck what they're doing. Let's police it better. Let's make it better for everybody involved, recreational, commercial fishermen, everybody. So uh, this is a little interview we had with David Cresson. David, just come out of a real important meeting. And uh, I know the, the, the major topics, he had everything here at the Wildlife and Fisheries meeting yeah. today. Menhaden, the Menhaden, the pokey boats. After you done heard what you hear today and what you know, what's CCA stand on it? Yeah, well, we had a great meeting here today. I think it was a, first good, a, a good first step to begin the conversation on something that's long overdue here in Louisiana to understand the impacts of the Menhaden industry on our recreational fishing, on our overall ecology here in Louisiana. Uh, look, they, there's a billion pounds worth of uh, pogies coming out of the waters around Louisiana uh, every year. Uh, certainly that's going to have an effect on our speckled trout fishing, our red fishing, uh, and, and plenty of other species. We need to understand what that impact is. There's bycatch that's involved. There's uh, conflict with the recreational anglers that's involved. Uh, so we, we need to get a good understanding. Uh, frankly, we don't have a great understanding of any of those things now. I think today's meeting was a first, uh, you know, the first step in a, in a multi-step process to where we can get a better understanding and then try to implement measures that, uh, that resolve some of these conflicts and maybe mitigate some of those impacts. I got one question. Uh -huh. They were giving out statistics and yeah. talking about bycatch. One of them was really hard to believe. Yeah. You know, when they, you know all, all the catch come in, there was something like seven redfish and 11 right, feckle right, trout right, or right. whatever. Well, look, I mean, the members that are watching your show today, we've all seen the videos. We've all seen the, the, the floating redfish uh, left behind the boats. Uh, we know that those numbers are that they presented today, some of them are almost 30 years old. So it's a little hard to know uh, what's the case. We also know that the bycatch statistics in this industry are proprietary and confidential only to the two companies that, that do it. Uh, so. Uh, we need to figure that out. We need to learn uh, how is this affecting our speckled trout? How is this affecting our flounder and our redfish? Look, we're looking at we're looking at speckled trout changes in our management. Uh, do we first need to understand how you know the depletion of the Menhaden uh, you know uh, stock here in Louisiana is is going to affect that? So lots that we still need to know. Today was a great first step, and uh, we certainly plan to keep our members very well engaged and and, and up to date. Before we get into some more news and some more fishing reports, tournament reports, 
Uh, and I want to talk about CCA again. CCA involved in so much they're growing. You can see right now the store is wide open. I think we got a, we got a third winner uh, of a tag redfish. I mean, it's just outstanding. There's still a whole, whole bunch of, of the season left out there. Here we are just in the first, first month, first week, first few weeks, and they're doing it. You know, I was looking at the CCA National Magazine, and, uh, and Louisiana's right there on the top of it. Uh, I, saw, I saw they had little contests going on about uh, sending in pit photos of your kids uh, with, with a conservation idea or the same was going on. Uh, our producer, Chris Lecoq, and his, and his, his son, uh, Dean the Dream, Dean sent a picture in and is using an example. Uh, they got games on, on, if you go to CCALouisiana.com, they got games, they got things you can download, coloring books, they got everything in there, you know, to educate your kids. They got fish identification. They, it's got so many things that when you go to their website. Also, you know, being a computer illiterate, I went on myself and this does a lot of education just for me. Now, CCA Star, you know, all the results of what's coming on, the latest reports, what's in first place, what's in second place, and they're looking in there. And it reminds you that if your kids are a member, you a member, it don't cost them nothing to weigh in or send a picture of a speckled trout, a fish. All you got to do is measure, set the picture in, and chance to win tons of prizes. So just, re, just remind y'all, I want to thank CCA and again, for what they do, and we look at it. Now, I'm gonna jump right in right now to a, a little report I got. I went around and I called everybody. The only one I couldn't get, uh, I didn't get to talk to Ryan Lambert, but I called down at Venice, and let me tell you what, the fishing has been so hot, it's unbelievable. I talked to Mike Butler. Mike was saying, he said, Gary, you won't believe it. I called to my neighbor who went down there and fished the weekend before the storm. He said it was like a festival. Everybody was coming in with fish. Tuna, redfish, speckled trout. He even caught a bunch of catfish. He put some trout lines out before he went out looking for redfish. It, it's just amazing. Uh, he went to close rigs and caught snapper, a mangrove snapper. It, it was just unbelievable. Mike said it was like a festival, everybody being safe, like old time. Now the storm came in, it knocked some of that out, okay? And it's probably going to, it's probably gonna get back pretty good this week. Now we have a couple fronts to come in, but the tide, when it changed and the storm passed, a lot of that water went out fast. Mike sent me a picture from his camp at the marina, and you can see how, you know, how high it was over the docks and up, and up to the store, but that, that's it. You know, he said it started going out fast. Uh, he's got all hope it'll be good. I, I talked to, uh, I text Butch, I asked him to send me something. Butch sent me some video, it's a little long. I'll, I'll work with Chris, we might show you some of it. But it was in the store, it was about, you know, four or five inches in the store. And uh, I called him back, I was asking him how it was. He said as soon as it passed, it was going out fast. Same thing with Buggy down at, at, down at uh, Bridgeside. They were all of them concerning, you know, a lot of fishermen stayed in, the storm affected them a lot. But before the storm, my goodness, the reports that we are getting. So it's just too many pictures to show you this week because I got a little bit of news program. I want to show you that. Island Marina, I didn't get any pictures. It was up in the parking lot. Didn't get in the news store. But I got a picture of my camp, my neighbor uh, next door. This is about the highest it has been since I've been there. This is about the third or fourth time. It goes up, gets on the slab, it gets under the... Uh, under the carport, whatever you want to call it, you know, almost up to the road. But and when it goes back out, cleaning a little dirt out, a few grass. So uh, again, I thank God we, we died a few. The fish before that, coming in like crazy. Redfish, speckled trout. My, my buddy, uh, when I, we call it Ken's Camp, but he got a beautiful house in Clipper Estate. Uh, he went and got his, his grandsons to come spend a few days. He was debating whether he was going to go offshore at Fushan. But uh, he located some speckled trout. And he located them in Lake Bourne around some of the rigs. In fact, one or two rigs. 
It got so rough, he still caught 15 one day, and it, it was coming over the trolling motor and the valve, so he, he left. He had them two boys, super, super athletes, super outdoors. They, they did everything that weekend. He enjoys them so much. Both of them are blessed, the kids and him. When they come from Alabama, it's just unbelievable the luck they have and, and the enjoyment they bring each other. They were shooting a blowgun and, 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 and killing God, catching God off the pier at the house. Then they have been having a neutral problem. Them boys settled out. They killed five neutral with, with a, a petty gun. All right. Then when they were out fishing, they caught drum. And then that last day, they caught 43 speckled trout, all in a two to three pound range, uh, drop shotting. They were fishing in, in Lake Bourne. So, uh, Ken, you bless, you bless, you bless me all the time. Uh, Charlie, you and May, your old brother, you had to go back, y'all playing sports. They remind me of us and your daddy and your uncles. They all did the same thing. They played all the sports. But they, you know, when they did take time out to fish and hunt, run with rabbit dogs, I can remember your uncle and your grandpa. They, they were tremendous athletes, tremendous outdoorsmen. So thank y'all. I enjoyed that. Keep sending me, keep in touch. Now, we, we got some other trips. They got a, uh, one of the guys, wildlife and fisheries, the kids went with my, my grandkids over at Catechi and St. Joseph. They made a bow fishing trip out of, out of Hopedale. Uh, hence, hence Catherine and them, Goche and them, and a boyfriend and them, people that are just graduating, getting ready to start more schooling uh, in the medical field, I'm pretty sure. And let me tell you what, uh, thank y'all. You know, a lot of my grandkids, uh, they in the medical field, they're all heroes right now. They were my heroes before this, but, but the people in the medical field, the people in the first responders, uh, we got them all over. And y'all family, our family, God bless y'all. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to go through I'm going to go through some of these pictures pretty fast cause, uh, and I'm going to close with the tournament rodeo report uh, let me see my fishing report right here, here we go and I got photos uh, Dulac, John Bernard and Pete Ritos uh, they were catching on bait shrimp under a cork, hence a redfish good catch of redfish he caught Lafitte, bourgeois charter, send me a report they got a special coming on, $100 $100 they're knocking off of their report for staying in the cabin or one day, whatever. You call them right now, they own a lot of fish being caught. Uh, Tofield's son, is, uh, Junior, uh, uh, they run, they got all the same captains. Uh, the lodge, you know where it's at, contact it. Neworleansfishing.com, you call them, or, or bourgeois fishing. Uh, Ed Toops, now this is a sort of, <laughs> it's a freshwater report. Ed Toops in, out of Luling, he's fishing the Mississippi River. He sent me this, this, this a rare fish. It's a pieball blue cat. He's been catching flatheads. He's been catching blue cats up to 30 pounds. Uh, he's using rod and reel. Now he's using, he's using skipjack. I don't quite know what a skipjack is. I know what a topwater bait is. I, I was gonna get him to send me a picture, but he's using, uh, he's using shad, they're using brim, uh, they fish them rod and reel, and uh, you got to be careful when you're fishing that Mississippi River out of Luling. Here's a, a rare fish. It's, it's called a, he said he's getting it mounted. It weighed 12 pounds and it was something like 19, 20 inches long. John Bernard also sent me a freshwater report. Eli and Bobby, um, and Bobby Domain uh, fishing Grassy Lake, worms under a cork. Here he is, another great catch. Toledo Bend. My good friend and cream representative and fireman, one of the five chiefs up in Alexandria, is Mike and Linda Clark. Uh, they've been killing them big sackle. Now, let me tell you what. They, they slingshot sometime under the piers. He didn't say what they're doing. It. But his best bait's been a cream lure. They come out. There's a little bitty, a little bitty cream frog. It's an inch and a half long. They fishing it on a sackle jig. And another one was, was this the scrappy shad, okay? He showed some colors. So he sent me some pictures. I asked him to do it. He, he thinks it's rare, but we got a lot of them over here. These black crappie, they're so big coming up. They call them mohawk. They got a, back, a, a black strip down the back. I was told that was where they are.
Why choose Barbecue Guys? Because this is Barbecue Guys. Not only do we have the largest online selection of grills and outdoor furniture, top-notch customer service, affordable financing, and 3D design services to help you tie it all together, but we also know what it is you love most about outdoor living. Time spent with family and friends. Combined with our expert advice, you'll have everything you need to design your dream outdoor life. Stop by our showroom today. I'm Brett Favre. As a quarterback in the NFL, if I didn't stay focused, I ended up on my back or worse. Even the smallest distraction could make a good play or offensive drive come to an end. When you're in a car, the smallest distraction could end much more than a drive. It could end someone's life. Just like I refuse to lose on the field, I refuse to lose someone I love to distract and drive them. And you should too. Focus on the road. Don't drive distracted. A message from Farm Bureau Insurance. Hey, welcome back to Paradise, Louisiana, and this is the one our tournament and rodeo reports. I'm going to go back now and the Lies and Luckers. They've been giving the tournament report every month. They still went, they're back at it. Uh, the first place was uh, uh, Jimmy Doris and Cade Wagner. They had 11 pounds, 49 pounds. Uh, second place was Mark Moore. And Charles Dozat, 10, 7, 3. You notice these weights ain't been less than a pound separating them. Uh, Jimmy, it's Timmy Dickens. I want to say Jimmy Dickens. That's the player, huh? Uh, Timmy Dickens and Jay Breland had 9.79. Steve Hadley and Dwayne uh, Cambry, or Cranberry, yeah, got 9.62. Uh, Steve Hadley, I tell you, and, and, and you look at these weights again. And Big Bass was Nick Richard at 3.51. Uh, if you got something coming up, be sure way in advance. Email me, Gary at Paradise, Louisiana. I'll be sure to put it on there. So I don't have a whole lot of fishing video, but we got a good, good segment. Thank you for watching Paradise, Louisiana. Thank you again, BBQ guys. You saving a day. Thank you, and all our sponsors. Support them. They stuck with us through all this. Thank y'all for sticking with us. Still a number one watch outdoor show in Louisiana. Thank you again. God bless Louisiana. BBQGuys.com presents Paradise, Louisiana. Paradise, Louisiana is brought to you by Circle K, Baton Rouge Coca-Cola Bottling Company, Benny's Car Wash and Oil Change, Louisiana Fish Fry Products, Demco, CCA Louisiana and the CCA Louisiana Star Tournament and by Farm Bureau Insurance.